seriously. So yeah, the box should be nice. It's a women's medium crew and uh, size six to ten. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, and they're they're it should be nice. They're real soft, but they'll be warm. Seventy eight percent merino wool. This is a really cool picture. And it's a really dark crappie. And if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, you've seen what I did with the, um, the bandits. Lots of fun with that. So what I want to do is this one. Because this is perfect crappie size. Almost, I mean, you could carve this and make a sandwich out of it, for sure. But we're not going to do that. What we are going to do is use a couple of different stencils. I'm going to coat most of this in white, even though I could probably hide this shad dot, but I, I still want to give it a prime and scuff it just a wee bit. This is um, part of this four-piece order that we're doing this weekend. You guys will see this on Sunday. We're going we're gonna to do some cool stuff with this, so let's make this crappie. One of the things I like to make sure that I have full, especially when I'm doing several pieces in a row, is um, my airbrush cleaner. And I've, I'm sure that I've discussed this part before, but I do keep it in a small little squeeze bottle. This used to be, I want to say it was from US Paints. Those inexpensive paints that you get when you get uh, like the airbrush kits from Master. Uh, I think it's through TCP Global. But anyways, I washed it real good, cleaned it out, and it's now my airbrush cleaner. And the reason that I like it is because I can squeeze, kind of push it out real quick and dislodge anything that might become lodged down in that chamber if I get clogs. So just a quick little tip before we get started. But I like to make sure it's full because when I'm going through a, a fairly big volume of paint, especially on baits like swim baits, bigger baits, I like to make sure that I have enough cleaner to get me through the spray. This is a pretty neat, this is the Livingston Viper. It is a single jointed, it does have their signature sounds. Now I don't know for sure if there's a crappie sound in this, there may or may not be. However, even if we don't have, uh, if we're not doing this as a shad, it's, it's going to be a pretty cool build and it will make sounds. So when we're finished with this, when the clear coat's done and the spray is done, before I clear coat it, I got to scrape the paint off. And then after the clear coat dries, I need to go ahead and scrape the clear coat off just for there. But that's really the only caveat to this. So we should be all right. So this has got a dark back. Uh, looks like it's got a little bit of paint chip to it. Um, I've taped the eyes because the eyes are really, really well glued into this. And I could probably, I'm gonna, they're gonna be black because we wanna match the picture that's up in your corner now, but I'm gonna pull it out just so you guys can see. This is a very dark eye in this photo. And as crappie get larger, especially if they're in stained water or tannins, their entire body gets darker as you can see. It's pretty well portrayed in this photograph. So, Afterwards, I'm going to pull the tape off because there is reflective properties in underneath, you know, in the prism where this eye was put on. So we want to see if we can do that. So I'm going to use transparent black for the eye after the fact. Um, after we're done with the pattern, I'll pull the tape off before we clear coat and you'll, I'll show you that. I'll show you the whole thing, obviously, I always do. But just as a side note, that's why there's tape on there because for this pattern I really wouldn't need the tape because it's going to be black but I want to see if I can get some of those prism aspects of it. So step number one, we're going to cover the sides. I can probably leave the, the back alone uh, because it's going to be dark on this pattern anyways but I do want to get the sides done because we really want the stripes to disappear. and we can pull that back in as we need it. And I want to be careful because this is a heavier bait and I have this in the helping hands, but I still, I don't want to do any sudden moves with it because I don't want to drop it. 
So just be mindful, the, the more weight you're using, the better off you're going to be if you just make smaller, shorter moves with it. And that should be enough to cover. That shad dot has gone away, the stripes have gone away, you can still see a little bit of the black. But the next step in this is, after we clean this out, I'm going to give this a quick heat set. Actually, you know what, I might, because I can still see a few lines, you guys can see them too in the top of this. Now eventually, yes, it'll get covered with black, but the, the cleaner the palette we start with when we make a pattern, the better off it's going to be. Now I've given this a quick heat set off camera, and the next thing we want to do, and I'm going to show you this close up, but you guys are already seeing the thumbnail in the corner, but in this, and it's probably more visible since it's, it's an easier photograph to show on, on the corner in the thumbnail, but if you look at the thumbnail in the corner where you want to look at this, there's a lot of green, and I mentioned that in the workshop update when I did the bandit square bills for this. There's good bit of green throughout the face. There's some olive green along the back and it's kind of woven into the tapestry of this pattern. So I'm going to put some random splotches of pearl lime. We're going to start out with that and then into it I have my own kind of concoction of a olive green. Started with a wicked apple green and then lots of gray and lots of sepia. A little bit of white to kind of mute that down and it's a cool color of olive green. But just to start, well, it's a good random pattern. Probably looks yellow on the camera. It's not, it's lime green. I want to leave it white as well. To that, I'm going to come over top of it with this olive. I'm not going to clean the chamber in between. And just kind of thicken this green up in a couple of spots. And if you notice, I'm thickening up the middle and I'm leaving the edges alone. And the reason I'm doing that is because it kind of presents a better blend. When you bring it back over to the table, you can really see the difference between that olive green and the lighter pearl, pearl lime, which is that 5313 Createx Pearl Lime and my own variation that started with a wicked apple green of olive. So I like the mix there. I'm going to pretty much leave that alone. We're going to give this a quick heat set again and then we're going to start adding in the black pattern and then after the pattern goes in we're going to firm up the uh, just the texture of the scales. We're probably going to add some of this media com art pearlescent because we want it to be shiny. But the pattern itself is going to be pretty cool because we're going to be using a couple of different stencils for that. Um, again, I've really gone to town on these and that's what we're actually going to start out with and then we're going to weave another pattern around that. Okay, now in this pattern that you guys are looking at, you can see that it's a lot darker on the top and in the front by the gill plate and on the face than it is on the belly area. Another reason we left a lot of this white along here. So we're going to go from the top of the fish down. I'm going to start with this. I've loaded Wicked Jet Black into the chamber. I'll set this off to the side there. And we're going to use our bigger parts. My pressure is on 15. going to lay this out on both sides here. And you can notice in the middle of this there is a stem, the vein of the leaf itself. We're going to come back and go over 
that blank spot because we really don't want that. We don't need it in the pattern. It doesn't make sense for it to be there in the pattern because this is a crappie pattern, not a leaf pattern. And then we'll just go ahead and do the same thing all the way down. It really doesn't matter if we go into the gill plate because that's going to be covered over with black. But because we're doing one side at a time, I'm going to lay this to the side and I'm going to pick up the other stencil. So I have a couple of different pieces of stencil. These are FX stencils. I like very much this little section through here, so we're probably going to reuse that quite a bit. And this, which if you can see through, and I think the camera does a pretty good job of showing that, um, this is almost ideal. So we're going to just kind of move this throughout. But because this is such a larger pattern, we also want to make sure that we kind of surround this a little bit with some bigger splotches. You'll see where I'm going with that in just a second. So again, we're going to start from the top and work our way down. And we're just going to, it doesn't really matter where we're headed. We're just going to kind of work over the existing pattern that we just made with that placemat. We just want to get it all to tie in. And you'll see pretty quick how that's going to start to look. Now you're starting to see the actual crappie pattern come through that. And could we have done it, we don't need it everywhere, could we have, have pulled that off without the second stencil? Maybe, but it sure does help to have a good base, especially for something like this. We just want to kind of thicken that up, especially towards the top. And then just kind of move in and out with these other pieces of stencil. And that really starts to make it look like a crappie. Add some more paint. And then as we move through, just kind of randomly adding this pattern in. I'm going to slide this around so I can work on the top section here. And you don't want to you don't want to overkill it. Obviously, it's a little bit lighter in the belly in the midsection of this. But because this is such a dark pattern, you can get away with adding a little bit more in than you normally would. There we go. We're getting there. I have heat set this side. I'm going to flip it over and do the exact same thing the exact same way. Probably want to load a little bit more black. And then just come in with our placemat.
You want to try and spray a little bit light only because you don't want to set this down on a wet pile of paint and smear it. Dab this off. This is one of the few patterns that without question I would use a natural black on every single time. I like the contrast in it. I like the way the pattern turns out. And on most crappie, it's a very distinct black and white. So there is that big contrast difference in the patterns. And then just come back in with our larger pieces. Especially towards the top. Remember there's a big difference in how the top of this looks versus the bottom. Kind of mix this up and turn it around. for these little key pieces that need to be a little bit darker. We are coming down the home stretch here with the pattern itself. And then we need to get the edges as dark as possible on this pattern. But it's pretty neat to see the transformation and the differences just between now, I think it probably would have looked fairly cool just in this placemat pattern, but because there's so many lines, again, like I said on the earlier shop update when I was doing the square bills, almost looks like a maze. So I want to try and stay true to that pattern if I can. And to me, that kind of involves using more than just one stencil, at least for me. It might not for you. But just like with all the patterns that I teach you guys how to spray, do your own thing. If you have variations that you think will look really, really good, then by all means experiment, play with them. That's the whole purpose of learning how to do something. I think we'll do one more down here. Let's get that definition in. Now we're going to heat set this, and then we're going to work on just darkening up the outside of this pattern and then adding back in. I'm going to add some moss green into the top of this face. You guys can see it a lot better on your thumbnail than you can in this picture because I'm just holding this up and there's probably some glare on the picture itself. Gave this a quick heat set and we're going to put this in the helping hands cradle here in a second but while we have it off take the opportunity I'm going to add a little bit more jet black into this I'm also going to mix in some Wicked Detail Black Magenta just to give it a little bit of a color shift. So there we have that. I'm going to raise this up just a wee bit. We're running around 20-25 now. And if we follow the pattern, then the darker part of this is throughout here even into the gill just a little bit underneath this is also dark so I'm going to kind of blend that through and we really want to darken this up and I'm doing this in my hands versus having it on the cradle just because I want to be able to move it around a little bit I'm less likely to 
drop it off of the drop it out of my hands than I am if I had it in the cradle. There we go. I'll just flip this and come back down along the top. Run this the same spots down along that gill plate. Don't want to completely bury the pattern. You want to still be able to see some of this pattern throughout. And you kind of want to get lighter as you go along the belly. Kind of bringing this at an edge at this point just so I can blend it a bit better. That's good enough to eat. Now if we look at this pattern, if we were to hold it like this, the bottom is pretty much left alone. And then as you go up towards our gill here, and our pectoral fins, we get a little bit darker. So one of the things that I'm gonna do here is just add a little bit of black to that top fin, right like that. Add a bit of a shadow, do the same thing on the other side, just pop this black in right here. And then just come up real light just to kind of give that defined pectoral fin edge. I have pulled the tape off of the eyes. I have pulled the opaque jet black out and I have some trans, just a little bit of transparent black in here. So all we're doing is we're just gonna darken this eye up just a little bit. And we're gonna kind of give it some shading off to one side. And we're gonna leave the front of this alone. Cause I wanna keep a little bit of that prism effect that foil. There we go. Now I'm ready for just a wee bit of moss green. Let's go ahead and heat set this. I can do this on camera because it's not going to take very long. Some detail moss green. And I've got a little bit of pearl underneath of that. Just a wee bit. We're gonna be very careful at this point. I kinda wanna give it that pearl sheen. And just to finish it off, I'm going to hit just a little bit more black magenta. Under here. Under there. Hit those eyes. Just that side. Now we're gonna hit it with some pearlescent. And then we're gonna let this air dry before we brush on our clear coat. Definitely not a dip and hang on this one, folks. So 
So this is now pre-clear coat. If we bring this in, I think that we have achieved the look that we're going for. It's a nice dark crappie. Kept the belly white, added a little bit of green, and I can't wait to see what this looks like with that shiny top coat on it. If you guys keep brushes, the flat brushes, if that's what you're using to brush on epoxy or any kind of two-part, if you're using DEVCON, if you're using KBS, I'm going to be using KBS. A couple things you want to do. Make sure that there's no loose hairs in your brush. And also, if you use it around where you airbrush, give it a good flick a few times just to make sure there's no excess dust or particles. Just something to keep in mind. Now I do not use the same jar of KBS to, to dip as I do to brush on just because if there's any particles or anything else in the brush I want to keep it separate. So that is the case here. My dip jar is over there this is my brush and jar. Always keep some paper down. And we're going to run and do one side at a time. So we're going to start because it's thin. It's just nice even coats. You don't want to get it in the cracks and crevices. So we're going to do the back side and then I'm going to hang it off camera. It's going to be hung in the same fashion basically. And I'm going to let it hang down completely, but I'm also going to do a couple other things with it. Um, I'm not going to show you that entire process of hanging, but what I will be doing is checking on this every few minutes or so as it starts to dry to make sure that if there's anything, any drips, that that is taken care of with a separate brush. And this is going to get, because it's a swim bait, it's going to get a couple of different coats. So the process of actually coating this is going to take a couple of days versus 5, 10, 15 minutes that I can show you guys on camera. But you're going to see the basics. And again, one side at a time makes the most sense. And because this does start to tack up pretty quick, you want to make sure that you work. You can already see there's a couple of drips down this side. That's fine because it's still wet. You want to work in an efficient kind of a quick manner and just make sure that you're coating the entire bait and the bottom. And I'm going to be handling one side and hanging. It's always easier to do this bottom part first. I'm actually going to pull this off on camera for you guys here in just a second. Just nice even strokes. All the way down. This is KBS Diamond Strength clear coat. It's not an epoxy. Let's kind of give it a once over. Take a good look at it. And then just make sure You have everything coated evenly. Then once I take this off of the helping hands, I'll get where the eyelid is and notice that I'm being very mindful not to get it where the ball bearings are because on this Viper the ball bearings are right in there and we're pretty much at the point where I'm going to pull it off the helping hands now.
and I'm only handling this side and then we'll just go ahead and continue on down but you definitely don't want to get anything in this uh, weight chamber and just one more sure everything's in those crevices flip it then come back and do the same thing run it down the same way that the mold is and then make sure you don't have any drips on the belly and that your eyelet is coated And you really don't want any inside of this little pocket because your tail is going to go back into that. And then pretty much what we're going to do is just grab one of these. We're going to hang it. But as we hang it, when I bring it back over here, I'll put it up there. Make sure it doesn't touch the paper. But then what I'm going to be doing off camera, folks, is that every couple of minutes, um, as this drips down and drains down, and I can see a little bit there on the back now, bring my wet brush back over and then just smooth that out and pull any of the excess stuff off because excess will build and you don't want that either. I certainly hope that I've been able to teach you guys a couple of things today and again I'm just going to take this wet brush here and I'm going to use a separate brush. I'm not going to try and preserve this because it gets tacky real fast um, and I'm going to keep coming back every couple of minutes off camera and checking this. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. I really hope that I've been able to teach you guys a couple of things. I've given you my best representation of a life-size, lifelike pattern for a, a black crappie. Thanks to Judd Horn for that awesome photograph and uh, he's the one that provided the photograph and, and all of the photographs that I've been using for this particular series. I love working from reference photographs so if you guys have anything that you want to send me that you want me to try to spray I'd be more than happy to do that for you and as always thanks for stopping by the channel it's always great company. Love each and every one of you guys. Hope you have a fantastic day. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.